أعوذ بالله من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وبه نستعين وأفضل الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الخلق والمرسلين محمد وأهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين أما بعد يقول الله في كتابه الحكيم وهو أصدق الصادقين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وما خلقت الجن والإنس إلا ليعبدون صدق الله العلي العظيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته brothers and sisters Inshallah today I want to discuss a specific hadith that has become very popular or is very popular on the pulpits, very popular on social media and unfortunately very popular in the books of our ulama. The reason for this video is to highlight a very dangerous mistake that we have to be very wary of. It's very crucial that we are very wary of such mistakes. Um, now, of course, some people do do these type of mistakes where they would narrate something attributed to Allah and His Prophet and the Imams, and they can't actually, there's no actual proof for you to be able to do that. And they don't mean it in a bad way. It's just, it's become popular. So they think, oh, if this scholar is saying it, it must be true. But when we sit on the pulpit of Rasulullah, it's upon us to double check everything. I mean, now we have Google, it's very easy. We have very, um, a lot of different websites where you can put a few words and you can start to search. It's very easy. Shia online library and Noor library and all of these things, they're all there to look at. And very easy for you to be able to differentiate between that is which is falsely attributed to the to Allah, His Prophet and the Imams and that which can be proven. Now, <clears throat> the hadith we want to discuss today is a hadith Qudsi. Now, hadith Qudsi is not your normal average hadith. It's not the hadith narrated from Rasulullah. It's not a narration of Rasulullah. It's not a narration of the Imams. Now, what does that mean? It means that the narration is going back to Allah. In reality, is going back to Allah. Now, it, it would come from the Prophet. So the Prophet would say, Qala Jibra'il to me, Jibra'il said to me that Allah said this. So it would become a hadith Qudsi. Now, of course, hadith Qudsi is not part of the Quran, but it is the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the Prophet, through Jibra'il, through the Prophet. Now, the hadith we want to discuss today is the famous popular hadith mentioned on the pulpits. I was a hidden treasure and I like to be known, so I created the creation so they may know me. A crucial point here is this hadith has been narrated in various different books with slightly different wording, but generally, this is what um, has been said on the pulpit, okay? So we see that, of course, it's Allah saying, I was a hidden treasure, I like to be known, so I created the creation, so they may know me. Now they attributed to Rasulullah, who obviously narrated it from Jibra'il, who narrates it from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now let's look at the different scholars that have mentioned this specific hadith in their books. First of all is Sayyid Khomeini in his At-Talab wal-Irada. He's also mentioned it in other books. Sheikh Makarim al-Shirazi mentioned it in his Tafsir. Al-Muhaqqaq al-Karaki has mentioned it in his Rasail. Masharaq al-Anwar al-Yaqeen fi Asrar Amir al-Mu'mineen by al-Bursi. Al-Allam al-Majlisi in his Bihar, he narrates it from his father. Al Majlisi Al Awwal, so the father of Al Alam Al Majlisi mentions it in Rawdat Al Muttaqeen. Mulla Sadra narrates it in his Sharh of Usul Al Kafi. 
Sayyid Ni'matullah al-Jazari mentions it in, in Al-Anwar and Nu'maniyya. Now, of course, other scholars have mentioned this hadith also, but I'm just uh, bringing up the, you know, the more popular um, scholars, the more famous scholars. The Sunni scholars that have mentioned it, Fakhruddin al-Razi in his tafsir, Al-Alus in his tafsir, Ibn Khaldun in his tarikh, um, Ibn Khaldun, now, Ibn Arabi also mentions it in his Al-Futuhat al makkiyya and Fusus Al-Hikam. But he has a very interesting line when he mentions it. He says, وَرَدَ فِي الْحَدِيثِ الصَّحِيحِ كَشْفًا الْغَيْرَ الثَّابِتِ So he says, it has been reported in the authentic hadith kashfan that is not proven. Now, from my understanding of his words, he's saying it's not proven. So he, he's understood that through the normal, average way that scholars identify if a hadith can be authentically said that the Prophet said it or not. It's not authentic, it's not proven, but it's sahih kashfan, meaning it's a way. So basically, some of the Sufiya. They have another way to authenticate hadith. They would say that they met with Rasulullah in some way, dream or something along them lines. And they would ask him about the hadith and he'll tell them that, yep, yeah, it's sahih. So, so from what I'm understanding from the words of Ibn Arabi, he's saying sahih kashfan. So based upon that. Now, kashf, there is a discussion on it. There's different definitions, understandings of it. I'm not saying we reject it, but that specific manner of authenticated hadith is just the Sufiya that um, rely on it. Now, I have seen obviously some um, Sunni uh, narrators um, have similar things, but from what my understanding, majority of the scholars of uh, Al Jarh wa Ta'deel from the Sunni do not um, apply such. Um, approach to authenticating hadith now it's very crucial that we mention something very crucial this hadith is not mentioned in one single classical book of hadith let it be shia or sunni nowhere now let's go to the book of sheikh asif muhsini Mashra'atu Bihar al-Anwar He says In volume 2 Page 113 He says I say Verily the famous hadith upon the tongues I was a hidden treasure And I like to be known So I created the creation So they may know me I did not find it in any book Or report Let me repeat that I did not find it in any book or report and the Muhaddith Al-Fayd Al-Kashani mentioned in some of his books that it is from the cause of the Sufiya. It's from the Sufiya. He's saying he hasn't found it in any book or report. Another scholar Al Qadi Nurullah al Tustari in his Ihqaq al Haq wa Ishaq al Batil. He says, I say, and what is apparent from some of the companions, so Shia scholars, after that it is shocking. So he's shocked by it. For some of the scholars have done commentaries of this statement, claiming it is from him, the Prophet, وآله, that it is narrated. That it is a narrated hadith reported from him, the Prophet. And upon you is to prove and investigate. SubhanAllah. Another scholar, al-Shaykh al-Shahroodi, yeah, in his uh, Mustadak Safinat al-Bihar. Volume 9, page 193. He says, And the famous hadith, I was a hidden treasure, and I like to be known. It is from the fabrications as found in Ihqaq al Haq. Fabrications. Also from the Sunni side. Now, why is it important that I mentioned the Sunni side? Because to say 
Look, there's even an agreement between the major scholars of hadith that this is a weak or let's even say a fake fabricated hadith. It's nowhere to be found in the classical books of hadith. Now someone can say, but what about Al-Alam al-Majlisi or his father? Well, we know the father of Al-Alam al-Majlisi had some type of influence from the Sufiya to the extent that his son had to defend him. As for Bihar al-Anwar, well, it's a book of, it's an encyclopedia of hadith. So he's just adding that which he, which he found. Okay. Now, as Suyuti, he says, the hadith, I was a hidden treasure that was unknown and I love to be known. So I created the creation. I gave them knowledge of myself. So they came to know me. The hadith is baseless. La asla la. Is what Suyuti is saying. Also, another scholar, Ali bin Sultan al-Qari, in, al in, in his book, Al-Mawdu'at al-Sughra, he says, The hadith, I was a hidden treasure that was unknown, and I loved to be known. So I created the creation. I gave them knowledge of myself, so they came to know. The hadith is baseless according to the explicit statement of the Huffad, like Ibn Taymiyyah, as Zarkashi and as Sahabi. Subhanallah. And I've even seen statements from ulama narrating from Ibn Hajar, who also says, baseless, nowhere to be found. Aslan Ibn Taymiyyah says, he says, I couldn't find it in any Sahih or weak narration. To that extent. My brothers and sisters, we need to be very careful when we say قال الله وقال الرسول وقال الإمام Very dangerous. We are attributing to Allah here this famous hadith or so-called hadith Qudsi. We are attributing to Allah something that we cannot prove by any academic standard. We can't prove that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said it in any way. So how are we so comfortable with attributing such things to Allah? We have to be very careful, my brothers and sisters. Also, another thing that is very important is when we use such hadith to show the mercy of Allah and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us for ma'rifah and so on. These things are very beautiful. And I know that in our generation, there is many um, brothers and sisters that are having spiritual depression they feel far from the deen. But why would I want to bring you back to the deen with that which is falsely attributed, that which I can't even prove that Allah said it? Now, someone can also say, but the hadith, mavmoon al kalam, the content of the hadith is actually right. It doesn't go against the Quran or Sunnah. Even if we was going to accept that, even if we was to accept that, we still cannot say Allah. I would even be scared to say it's been attributed that Allah said it because it's come in the later generations. From my readings, it seems to have come into place or come into the books in the 7th, 8th century. It's too late. There's no proof for it. You can't just say Allah and then there's no proof for it. When I want to bring back brothers and sisters back to the deen or make them feel that this deen loves you, Allah loves you, why would I do it based upon that which I cannot prove? You know, when we do such things, that's, it's, it's like us saying that what is authentically narrated from Allah, his messenger and the imams والسلام, is not enough. That's basically what we're saying, directly or indirectly. We can't continue with us doing such things because what we're doing is, is we're giving false hopes based upon lies. Now I'll bring him back to the Quran and Sunnah through authentic Sunnah. I don't need to start making up things or start using things that came 500 years later. Now don't get me wrong, I can understand 
why such mistakes would happen because our big scholars are narrating this hadith. And it's quite popular in the books of our scholars. Even our major scholars that are doing talks and speeches are narrating this hadith. But again, they fell into the same mistakes. And this is not attack on the ulama. Hasha lillah. No. But this is to say that scholars do do mistakes. Hadi. Even our scholars now, they would sometimes say, yeah, this classical scholar, for example, Shaykh Al-Tusi, did a mistake. It's a mistake. It happens. They do mistakes. You know, it's, it's very normal. Now, ulama, of course, they have great status because of their knowledge, because of the knowledge that they reached. But that doesn't mean if a mistake happens, we can't mention it. Of course, with respect, with um, a correct approach and everything like that. And ask questions. Ask questions. Oh, I, I looked up this hadith. I found that it's not found in any classical works. These things can happen. So I don't blame the speakers. Because the truth is, if our major scholars or our big scholars are saying such things, it's going to happen. Right? Having said that, for a speaker, for someone to sit on social media, you have all these tools in front of you. Google, Shia Online Library, Thakhalain app or the Thakhalain website, all of these things in front of you. All you have to do is put a few words in and you get your answer. You will start to be able to go back to different books to see the answer. So just before we finish, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make our intentions clear and purify our intentions insha'Allah. Do not forget us from your du'as. Hada wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammad wa ahli bayti tayyibin al-tahirin.